Coming to you live from downtown Detroit, this is Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep with your host, Joel Elkanen. This is a volatile puppy here, isn't it? And Dennis Dick. I've been the penny. I will buy the stock for a penny. With everything you need to start your trading day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Benzinga's pre-market prep. Spencer Israel, Joel Elkan, and Dennis Dick. Apologies for the delay this morning. Uh, first time we've ever had an issue with Zoom, so uh, let's take that for whatever it's worth. Uh, but Zoom is n- normally pretty reliable. I had some trouble this morning, but we're all good now on the stream. So let's jump right in. A lot of earnings today. What, 210-something companies reporting earnings? Plus, we have the earnings after the bell yesterday. Talk about Apple, of course, AMD. Uh, this morning, uh, Humana, Aetna, Garmin, CVS, a bunch to get to. So let's roll right into it, Joel. T- uh, talk us through what's happening here overnight. All right. Uh, S&P's got a boost off those Apple earnings, and uh, Spoo's made a high at 61 and a quarter. Nothing there, folks. We're a new all-time high territory. I got a target up at uh, 29.7150 if you want to use that as a potential resistance area. Uh, crude in the red here by 39 cents at 63.52, kind of in no man's land. Uh, gold in the red by 220 as well. Silver losing that $15 area down 11.4 cents at uh, 14.87. And uh, I might just have to call this Gremlin Wednesday here because uh, I'm working uh, working from my home office today and uh, I try to sign on to my trade station. It won't come on. It won't come on. It won't come on. So I I called trade station and they said, oh, oh, are you in Michigan? And I said, yes. And they go, oh, well, trade station users in Michigan only are having problems and uh we are we're we're checking with comcast here so and then spencer had some problems but uh you know what we'll bring in triple d he'll he'll cheer everybody up i've always got problems (laughs) my (laughs) skype camera hasn't worked for a week (laughs) so anyways we do our best you can see the little picture of me in the corner because my camera which works on every other application does not work with skype right now we still haven't figured that out so i gotta make it a priority to figure it out but it's earnings season It's not a priority when it's earnings season. Earnings are a priority when it's earnings season. And like Spencer, 207 stocks reporting today. That's not including the stocks reported last night when we got the big guns. And let's start with the biggest gun of them all. The reason the market is rallying here this morning. Spencer, give us those Apple Yeah, you know, it's funny how different two people can look at the same report and come to different conclusions. Because I guess I got mesmerized by their low expectations but dennis sees through apple so i will i don't know if i do or not but <laughs> my opinion all right uh, <laughs> I, I just I... like talking against my book that's what it is i like to just complain i'm a complainer all right here glass we... is half empty over here here we go on apple uh q2 eps they basically beat across the board eps two dollars 46 cents 10 cent beat on the estimate sales 58.015 versus 57.4 billion dollars q3 sales guidance was higher as well they gave a range of we'll call it a range of the median was 53 billion dollars versus a 51.9 billion dollar estimate they also raising their quarterly dividend four cents from 73 cents to 77 cents per share authorize another 75 billion dollars for their buyback and as far as the segments are concerned, they were led by strength in uh, their non-iPhone uh, units and the the slowing growth, the rate of slowing growth from their iPhones is slowing. So we like all that. The rate of slowing growth is slowing. Yes. Did I say a that mouthful. Right? I guess that's a good thing. Two negatives make a positive? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they taught me in grade three math anyways. Let's – okay. So – they beat expectations. You know, everybody thought this was going to disappoint I me. Mean, people were nervous heading into the report. They hit it down four bucks ahead of the report, probably a lot to do with Google. You see people, you know, in the Google trade and they're looking at it and saying, okay, well, I, I've just lost the bulk of my gains in Google. Why not lock in the gains in Apple? I didn't do that. I held through the Google. I held through the Apple. Uh, happy I held through the Apple. Not so happy that I held through the Google, but these are long-term investments. Let's stop trading our long-term investment portfolios, people. Apple up 10 bucks. It was good to beat expectations. But one concern that I just have just overall when you just take you know, the expectations glasses off is that revenue actually declined year over year. 
And when has that happened? I mean, has that happened before with Apple? I'm sure it has, but it's probably been a while. Uh, looking, Question. yeah, looking just real quickly at the pro, which doesn't go back to their whole history, but I do not see any clear cut cases where this has happened in the past decade or last seven years. I'm trying just to look here and looking, and, and actually, yeah, we have seen this before. Okay, Charlie Balelo, uh, great follow oh, there yeah. on Twitter. Props to you right now because you just answered my question. 200 it looks like 2016 we actually were yeah revenue is 234 billion in 2015 it dropped to 216 billion in 2016 so we have seen this recently then went to 229 266 now it looks like in 2019 we could actually go down so obviously 2019 is not down yet but just looking year over year uh from the quarter perspective it was down so one good thing which spinner is, is mentioning is service revenue is up and we know they need to diversify themselves away from the iphone it's still half the revenues but the service revenue is coming up some of the other things the wearables were good so they are getting some revenue from other sources which is what the market wants to see as well now put the big perspective in as this company just makes so much money and they're doing another how much is the buyback another 75 billion dollars all right so another 75 billion dollar buyback this is why i'm just going to hold this on my long-term account i don't see a reason to sell it um could it pull back you know it has been an incredible run uh, 2019, the year started, you know, on the revenue warning and the earnings warning and the stock was down 143 bucks. Um, obviously, $211 has been one of the best performers. I mean, it's up 50% here this year in four months. So if you're coming in and buying it now, I feel like you are so late to the party. So I think the easy money has been made in Apple, but I'm still holding. And I just think, you know, if you've got a long-term horizon on this and you're looking five to 10 years out, the buybacks in themselves are going to drive earnings higher. I mean, this company just continues to make money. You know, even if they don't diversify themselves away from the iPhone, I don't see, you know, anything coming in and, and taking, you know, that their spot at number one there overall. So it continues to buy back stock and that drives earnings, uh, EPS growth as well. It drives the bottom line. So another huge buyback. Got to do something with their money. They're reinvesting in themselves. All right, uh, nice pre-market action here. Dennis, was there anything going on after hours before the report? Oh, yeah. The, you know what was interesting last night, as I tell you, man? They were all pretty good last night. So here, I was just looking at the after hours. And right before the report, Apple, I would say the 15 minutes before, it went from 200 up to like 203. So maybe, you know, there was some other, you know, there was a couple other stocks reported in there, although they were disappointing because it was Twilio. AMD reported and AMD was good and it was popping. So maybe that helped it a bit too. But you definitely had some people buying ahead of this report from 201 to 202, 203, you know, 10 to 15 minutes before the report. They were right. But you know what was interesting? And I'm not saying it's all insider trading, but everybody was right last night. Estee Lauder was bid up four bucks last night. Well, behold, they come out and they beat big time here this morning. If we just go and look at a few other ones, CVS was bid up all night. Hey, they beat significantly here. Stock's up 5%. Um, just going the other way, you can look um, at a couple stocks like Clorox was offered all night. Oh, it's down $6 today. So... I'm not saying it's all dirty. Maybe some people are really good at figuring these things out ahead of time and trading them after hours. But sometimes I, I often wonder, and this is just a question, um, you know, I, I don't know maybe if some of these companies leak this stuff out after the market closes at four o'clock, thinking that, okay, well, the market's closed now, so nobody can trade on it. So we can tell a few extra people, you know, how our quarter is going to be. Because how can they be right so often after hours? I mean, getting bidding stuff up. And sometimes they're wrong. Sometimes they're wrong. But it seems like more often than not, when you have multiple buyers, convicted buyers coming in here and bidding a stock up, it seems like more often than not that stock beats. I mean, Estee Lauder was ridiculous last night. There was so many different bids just coming and buying the thing. And Clorox was offered significantly. So in Apple, obviously, you know, before the report, we said the 10 minutes before the report it got bid up. Maybe that was because of AMD. But, man, it just seems like there's some dirty stuff that goes on after hours. All right, uh, just I'll uh, break down the uh, after hours pre-market trading. Uh, over a half a million shares have traded and there was no dip. It was just straight up after report. I'll give you the pre-market high. Pre-market high comes in at 212.75. So there's a target for you longs. And if you get through that area, then boom, then you just got to go to your next uh, daily high. And I was looking at this yesterday. And frankly, I don't see any daily highs until you get 
closer to 220 here. You had a, a pair of highs at 210 in early November, so that's going to be support. But the next daily resistance levels 222.36. I don't think we got the gas to get there. I'll use 1275 as a target. On the long side, the longer it takes to get there, maybe a rollover a little bit. But uh, to get to the top of uh, yesterday's range, you got a long way to go. And, and you know, by by Apple in the chat just saying that wasn't the case with Google. And in some cases, it's not. I'm not saying in 100 percent of the time that the insiders all know here. I'm just saying it's a pretty good coincidence that I'd say more often than not, when you see a stock really getting bit up after hours or really getting offered after hours, more often than not. They're usually in the right direction. So, and last night it just have happened that it seemed like everything that was bid up. I mean, I could go through them. Harris was bid up, HRS, Estee Lauder was bid up, and then not all these are going to be dirty, but some of it might be. Um, Humana was bid up significantly. Like I said, Clorox was offered down significantly. SO was trading down. I mean, it, it's funny, you know. Maybe it's just selective perception on my part, and maybe everything is clean. But we kind of know the way things work on the street, and not everything is clean all the time. So all I'm saying is there could be the potential where okay. some of these after-hours traders might be more informed than they should be. That's all I'm saying. All I'm right. definitely not the one. I'm trading off of all the news. <laughs> You're out Nobody's calling me and sending me messages. Oh, they're going to beat her. They're going to do this. But I'm saying that that potential is out there, and I don't think anybody's going to argue with me on that, that the potential for some dirty stuff activity is potentially out there. I'm the one that always lose to the inside. It's because I trade after hours. I'm always on the other side of the trade. <laughs> so right. I'd like to crack rip, down on it more. Let's, so rip I stop through some earnings. let's rip through some earnings because we got Michael Olson from Piper Jaffrey coming AMD. on at 830. AMD. Let's go to AMD. Let's do 38 seconds of report here. 38 seconds of report. AMD. Q1 adjusted EPS. Six cents beat by a penny. Sales 1.27 versus $1.26 billion. So a beat on the top and the bottom lines. In the first quarter, their Q2 sales guidance was... Uh, in line with estimates, 1.5 to 1.54 billion is the range that they gave on their report. AMD trading up. It is off the highs, but holding yes. on. So it got maybe a little bit over dead when it ran into around to 30 bucks right away. We knew there'd be some big resistance up there, and there was. It failed. I think 29.95 was the after hours Bingo. high. Came down a buck. It's kind of just been hanging out in the middle. So bull bear battle here. So the Bulls want to take it up to 30. The Bears want to take it back down to flat. I don't know who's going to win. But we talked about this one. And I think as long as they were going to do anything okay, it was going to go up until it already set the bar so low for them. that And everybody wants to believe that AMD is you know, taking all the share from Intel, which they might be doing. So AMD, I think, was going to go up. I said it yesterday on the show. I think this is probably going to go up, and it did. So I wish I would have been long ahead of the report. It was not. But stock is still trading up a buck twenty. Let's see how it, you know, it's a very big day for it. Can it get up? Can it get up and retest that 30? Um, get up to those after hours highs, or does it start to leak and go back to flat? Because you would not want to see this thing start to give back the gains. Uh, pre-market high 29.95. That corresponds perfectly with the high just after the Google announcement from April 3rd. So boom, there's your bogey on the upside. On the downside here, uh, we're trading above yesterday's high, but I'll use that as support 27.80. I'd be more interested to buy this right around 28 bucks, as that's where you the highs were for the last three sessions. Jump over Twilio, which is obviously oh. one of your big cloud stocks here and moving the entire sector here. This stock was wild on the report. They rocked it, and then the BTF deers came in hard, and now it's up 5%. So can't go wrong with these strong, strong stocks. When they pull back, they get those dips get bought, and sometimes those dips don't last even an hour. And this one did not last long last night. Give us the results True. there, Mr. Israel. This one is a beast. Uh, Q1 EPS, $0.05 cents versus a $0.01 cent estimate. Sales, $233 versus $222 million. So beat on the top and the bottom line. They gave some uh, Q2 guidance as well, EPS guidance in line. Q2 sales guidance, higher than estimates. Fiscal year EPS guidance, higher. Fiscal year sales guidance, higher. Great report. 
One number, 145 and a half is your pre-market high. You backed off that area, just hanging out here at 144. So I use that as a target. Then your half and whole numbers. Uh, on the downside, if you're looking for a gap fill, you better get your bid out there at 137.20. That was a high from yesterday. Don't think we're going to see that. So if you want to buy this one on support here, you'll have to tune in to like your one or three or five minute charts, which uh which I never do. So uh, that's the resistance, 145.50. Lots of other stocks moving off this. I think your Splunksters and sometimes your CRM. And you know what? It's just so many good tech earnings here, really, today. When you look at Apple, AMD, and Twilio, these are three. You know, you got chips, you got the cloud, and you got Apple, which drives everything. So it's not surprising that you're seeing bids across the board and pretty much all tech stocks here this morning. The QQQ is up significantly. It's up 0.72. But one consideration here is Apple's almost 10% of that, 10% of the QQQ. So it's up 5%. So two-thirds of the QQQ gain is just Apple. So again, there's going to be some rotation here happening if that's the case, because you know there's going to be a lot of other tech stocks up that are obviously components in the QQQ. So to make up for the difference, you probably see a few stocks trading potentially down here today, talking non-tech stocks, or the QQQ is going to rally some more. But um, you look at the S SPY, it's up 0.35%, a lot of good news out there. Uh, there is a potential we're going to see some rotation here today. So I would not be comfortable just going and buying stocks across the board here today. I think some of the non-tech stuff, stuff could get sold. Let's go over to non-tech and let's talk about CVS here. Q1 adjusted EPS, a buck sixty. This is not one that's going to get sold. <laughs> <laughs> a buck sixty-two versus a buck fifty, so beat there. Sales sixty-one point six for sixty point three nine billion dollars. So they beat on both their numbers in the uh, in the first quarter. They also raised their fiscal year EPS guidance from six dollars seventy-five cents to well, actually, yeah, sorry, from six. Uh, they, is that a raise? What? Six dollars seventy-five to six. Yeah, that, that's uh, oh, six sixty-eight to six seventy-five on the low end of the range there. So their EPS guidance for, for the fiscal year was good. Their earnings report was good. Big pop here. I kind of wanted to take this through the report. I actually bought the close and good then for it's you. bit up. But then it was bit up after hours, and I was like, okay, you know, bird in the hand, right? So I, I, I wanted to take part of it through just because we've seen all the buyers after hours too, and they usually know what they're doing. I already had the stock, but anyway, it's a bird in the hand. So I sold it last night in the upper 54s. Obviously, it was a mistake because it was a good report. I just feel like it wanted to go up. It's been in the doghouse for so long. We've had some execs buying stocks. Yeah. I think the low, I think the short term low in CBS is in. Could it give this back? You know, I don't know if I'm, I'm not chasing this thing. It's been a dog for a long time. The trend is still not your friend here. So I don't think this is the case where you got to go buy 57 and a half today. Probably get another shot back down here. You know, maybe the old resistance of 55 becomes support. So I've never made a lot of money chasing stocks, so I'm not chasing. But I do think the CVS low is potentially in. Yeah, this one, I've been eyeing this one for a long time. And it really gave you a level. That 51.77 low back in March, it tested it in April. And then it even gave you a look in May as well. So and I, I, I don't know who it was in the chat, but we had a couple people that were really, really hawking with that stock. And I hope they caught it. I'll give you pre-market high, your pre market high comes in at 58.40 uh, on the dailies. What am I seeing? Oh boy, we haven't. Oh, this is the area of resistance. Uh, I even call it resistance here. You have one, two, three. Uh, well, 56 is major resistance because I see, uh, I'm sorry, higher 58 handles major resistance because I see one, two, three highs at 58.60. So that's a target on the upside. On the downside, uh, I don't know what you would use as support. You just had a little spike down to 5601, but I don't think that was on much volume. All right. Where do you want to go, Mr. Israel? You can lead the way because, like I said, we're 207 stocks here. And again, chat, if anybody wants, or Twitter, if anybody wants specific stock for us to cover, give us that ticker symbol because there's nowhere we're covering 200 stocks here today. You want to go to Clorox? We can go to Clorox. So. Go to Clorox. It's down eight bucks. Um, <laughs> this is a stock that really they, uh, you know, I don't think they got this one right here because this had a run late yesterday into the earnings. So dead wrong. Stock going the other way here, uh, down trading at 152, although it was offered last night. So maybe some people after hours had buyer's remorse saying, what am I doing buying Clorox way up here on the day? I uh, hope they got out because if you didn't, you're getting the beats here this morning. 
All right. Uh, Clorox Q3 EPS a buck forty-four versus so they missed by a penny there. Sales of one point five five versus one point five seven billion dollars. So a slight miss on the Q2 print. Their fiscal year EPS guidance was in line at six and a quarter to six dollars thirty-five cents. I think the rotation here keeps us down too. I think you're going to see some rotation out of the defenses today. I mean, you're going to see there's just there's not enough the, the indexes aren't up enough for everything to go up. So some stuff has to go down. So your natural thoughts is, okay, well, let's start selling maybe some of the consumer staples here. If Clorox is going to go down, maybe it's going to drag down some PGs. And Spinner was saying that. And maybe it's going to drag down you know, some of the other KMB, some of the other uh, defensive stocks. Think of your XLP components. Some of those could actually be a little bit weaker here today, although it's still bit up here this morning. I think you're going to see some rotation. Like I've already said, I think you're going to see some rotation in the non-tech here or, or out of non-tech today. So if they're all coming into tech, they're going to be coming out of something else because the indexes aren't up enough for everything to go up. Unless the index is really going to rally mode, I think you're going to see a non-tech sell-off here today. Okay. Uh, this is uh, from Clorox here. Your pre-market low comes in at 151. And if you were waiting for a gap fill from February 1st, you got it. 151.01 was the high. So if you're looking to pick this up on the cheap, I'd say that 151 to 150 area. I mean, this is a wild stock, but there is, uh, there is uh, from a gap fill perspective, there is support there. Uh, longer it takes to take out or get near that 150 area, a lot of rally potential here. Uh, as far as finding resistance here, since you made that 151 low, you kind of got a little bit of an up bar going here with a 152.88 being the high of that bar. So 151, 153, that's your early range here for Clorox. Royal Caribbean Cruises Q1 adjusted EPS of a buck 31 beat wow. a buck 11 estimate sales 2.44 versus 2.38 billion dollars so they beat both their Q1 numbers and they are raising their fiscal year EPS guidance uh, from uh, not well actually raise it to the mid to high nine dollar range. It's a big pop here too. I just look at all these stocks trading higher and you see the index only up. You know, 10 handles here, something's got to give. There's just too many stocks trading up in the pre market for the, the index, got to rally a lot more. Some of these stocks got turned around. So that, that are, they're actually going to start leaking. Cause I'm even looking at my down filter. And yeah, you have Clorox in there. And like I said, I think you're going to see some of the consumer staples maybe get hit here. You know, Yum's trading down on their earnings report top. And so, so you are seeing that, you know, this is non tech. A little bit get ahead here. Yes, oil is trading down here a little bit too. So maybe that's going to help out, you know, from the downside here. But there's just a lot of stocks trading higher. RCL, one of them too. I mean, um, even even some non-tech stuff like RCL, like Boeing's trading up. There's, this is, it, it, there's too much stuff that's up for the index to be only up this much. So one of two things have to happen. A few stocks have got to start to leak some gains or the index has got to rise substantially. Math is not adding up in the pre-market. Uh, let's see, you had a spike here in RCL up to 127.97. And yes, I can find the daily level there. 127.81 was your October 4th high. So there you go. You got a little confluence. Uh, the next high comes in at uh, 129.08 and then 130.20. So if I was long, if I was using the numbers, I'd try and get that uh, that target of the pre-market high, see if they take me out at 128, see if they take me out at 128.50, see if they take me out at 130. And if they don't, then you might have to sell on a little bit of a decline. All right, let's go to uh, ticker Connecticut, right? Garmin, G-R-M-N, uh, reporting this morning, Q1 adjusted EPS of 73 cents, beats 71 cent estimates. Ooh. Not big enough. <laughs> Sales of 766 versus 730 million dollars. They reaffirmed their fiscal year guidance as well. Uh, sales guidance of 3.5 billion dollars. EPS guidance also reaffirmed at three dollars and 70 cents for the fiscal year. The stocks had a huge run. What was the news back? That was was that earnings? It wouldn't have been earnings back in What's February, Feb was it? I Feb think 20th? it was. Was that earnings? It had to have been in February. You yeah, I'm looking when it went from seventy two dollars up to like eighty four dollars. February twentieth. Yes, that was earnings. That was the last earnings report. And we've just been holding on to those gains ever since. And now you get a 
it didn't meet the lofty expectations. It's not necessarily a bad report, but it didn't meet the lofty expectations. And that's why you're starting to see the stock leak here um, in, in the pre-market. I mean, you get into this area, it's a slippery slope, right? So you want to see us hold like 80. So let's get down below there. And, and there's just not much in there. 75, 75, 50 was that low on earnings day. And then uh, you got a gap to fill after that to 71, 83. Uh, big windfall here for the shorts. Anybody that's been short this stock um, underwater here, just trade. Is it offered there, Des? Looks like you just got so wide. Much. Really wide. wide. Light okay. volume, 8,100 shares. 81 to 82, 89. So two point spread here. This is wide. Yeah, don't you? I don't know. It just kind of feels a little. I mean, the chart saying, yeah, you got some more to go, but just uh, being down on this little amount of volume, to me, it looks like a little bit overdone, but, uh, you know, things get overdone and then well done and then extra well done. So, uh, <laughs> see, that's a good saying for this market. They do seem <laughs> to do that. <laughs> uh, any imbalances here, Dennis? Maybe it will oh, help you. Uh, it will help you uh, change your uh, your uh, market arbitrage perspective. Maybe some of these imbalances. No, you know what? They're very mixed. And what we're seeing a little bit. What I talked about. You're going to see non-tech get hit a bit. AT&T 262,000 to sell. Verizon 58,000 to sell. Both those stocks in the red. I mean, they got to sell something, right? Um, because the indexes aren't up enough. CBS is going to have a big buy imbalance. 71,000 shares. That's off earnings. They're pretty small. I'm just trying to grab like anything that really stands out. But for the most part, like you do see PG, 47,000 to sell. So we are seeing that consumer staples trade. I think you're going to see that those stocks, maybe maybe those are the ones that get hit a little bit. And unless, you know, all of a sudden Apple starts to turn around and tech starts to roll over, there's going to be that inverse correlation going. So if tech stays strong, I do think some of these consumer staples are going to be weak. All right, uh, 8.32, three minutes away from our guest, Mike Oles, and from Piper Jaffrey. Uh, he's going to cover a few stocks for us. Spencer, let's uh, let's rip off uh, two or three more of those 100-plus reports. Did we do a stale order? I don't think we did, but I can't remember. No, we talked about it on the okay. three-three market five bucks yeah. okay. report. Then let's do uh, EL real quickly here. Q3 EPS, a buck 51 versus a buck 29 cent estimate. Sales, 3.74 versus $3.57 billion dollars. Great Q3 print. Fiscal year guidance yeah. that they see is higher than estimates by on the low end 10 cents, on the high end 13 cents. Congratulations so, to the person who was buying it last night, hand over fist ahead of the report. You are indeed correct. So I'll just leave my comments at that. Uh, someone what that same person wants out between 181 and 181.40. Uh, you hit 181, pull back, you hit 181 and change 181.40, and then that last bounce was up to 181. So I think that that seller might even come down to 180 in the regular session, but uh, there's definitely a, a lurking offer out there at that area based on the 15 minute chart, uh, support. You could call it support. You pull back to 177.40. Uh, so underneath that, that floodgates open on the downside. To fill yesterday's gap, you need to get down closer to 172.96. That was the high from yesterday. And interestingly, you had about three highs at 173 over the last three sessions. So there's your support. Old resistance, new support. All right, let's take a quick break now and grab our guest, Mike Olson, Managing Director and Senior Research Analyst of Piper Jeffrey. He will offer... Uh, Another opinion for us on the Apple report. He also covers uh, ATVI, Netflix, Take Two, who had an interesting upgrade today. So we'll ask him about that. Amazon covers a lot of tech. So we'll be right back in a moment here with Mike Olson from Piper Jeffrey.
All right, welcome back, everyone. As promised, we are joined by Mike Olson, Senior Research Analyst at Piper. Jaffrey, Mike, how's it going this morning? Going well. How are you? Uh, going well, going well. So let's get your quick overall take here. I, I, I heard you on the uh, conference call yesterday. What was your uh, overall take on Apple's quarter? Uh, you know, it was strong across the board. The only real metric that was below plan was Mac revenue. And, and really, that was just due to a temporary component shortage on the processor side. And then, you know, the guidance, uh, revenue guidance for the June quarter is above street estimates. The company's basically just seeing more favorable trends with iPhone across all markets, um, I think partially due to some pricing cuts. And then they continue to see strength on non-iPhone devices like iPad was really a surprising strong point during the quarter, um, as well as continued strength with services revenue. So Tim Cook said they feel a lot better now than, than they did three months ago. Uh, I, I'm wondering if you think that uh, in terms of just like the short term sentiment here, do you think they may have like over exaggerated their problems a few months ago or and, and that this really was a good rebound? Or do you think they or either they over exaggerated or they didn't and this really was a great rebound? Yeah, I think I think it was um... Uh, a, a strong rebound in the sense that, you know, they um, maybe realized that they had overpriced some of their products in certain markets and had an opportunity to drive more volume by uh, cutting the price on iPhone. And then in the meantime, I think they, they underestimated and everyone, um, the street investors, analysts, et cetera, um, underestimated the potential uh, strength of non iPhone. Again, like I mentioned, I don't think anyone would have guessed that we would see um, the, the iPad upside that we saw during the quarter mm -hmm. um, or really over the last couple quarters. And then services, I think, you know, people are more well versed that services is doing well, um, but that continues to outperform uh, expectations, even though um, n numbers were getting um, fairly frothy on that side. We're on the line with Michael Olson, Managing Director and Senior Research Analyst at Piper Jeffrey. Uh, just looking at the report, the declining revenue for the first time in such a long time, them buying back stock. I mean, I don't want to make this comparison, but doesn't this seem like at its heyday, this is what IBM did at the top of the market, buying back their stock. Uh, raising dividend, and we all know what happened to IBM. How, you know, what would you say to an investor that says, hey, you know, this is the report, you know, they, you know, put lipstick on a pig here, and we're looking at, at two, three, five years down the line, we're looking at uh, another IBM. Yeah, you know, I think one thing is that there's just a lot of potential for avenues of growth here. Um, so one of the things that I, I tried to ask the company about, but um, they are, are hard to get information from is just when you have, you know, 1.4 billion devices out in people's hands and on their wrists and in their homes or pockets, um, you have you have an amazing Trojan horse kind of into their lives that you can sell services on top of or, or potentially um, additional products. And so I think there's a, a huge pipeline of additional services coming that they can use to leverage that existing installed base. So I, I think there's an opportunity there. And obviously services is favorable in the sense that it drives higher margins. So as we see um, that mix shift continue of, of growing services revenue, the, the margins should trend higher. Um, the other thing that we looked at is just if we look at this name, um, Apple, as far as um, kind of a sum of the parts basis, and we take the services side of the business and, and kind of the, the remainder of the product side of the business, um, and we apply comp group um, kind of multiple averages, we end up with a share price that's over $230, so over our price target. Um, and we're using comp group averages, even though the Apple's uh, services and product operating margins are about twice what the comp group is. So we think that even that is, is quite um, conservative. Mike, was there anything you didn't like in that report? Um, you know, like I said, uh, the, the Mac side was a little weak, but that was a temporary issue. Um, other, otherwise, I think it was pretty straightforward. And um, I think the only thing that, you know, uh, people need to be concerned about or focused on is just that this year's iPhone cycle is going to be, uh, I think, pretty unexciting or uneventful. Uh, we do think Apple can work higher despite that due to improved demand around iPhone uh, with iPhone volumes improving on lower pricing as well as um, strength of services and, and non-iPhone devices. But just something to 
you know, keep in mind essentially that um, this year's iPhone cycle is not going to be all that exciting. Uh, and then just to wrap on the Apple discussion here, are, are you changing your, your waiting at all from price target? Um, we raised our price target to 230, um, but our rating remains overweight. Overweight, okay. Uh, you also cover a number of other uh, stocks in this space. You cover Netflix, uh, Amazon, a, a bunch of others. Uh, I guess with the, with the biggest names having already reported for uh, for the quarter, give us your quick uh, quick take on Netflix and Amazon. Yeah, I mean, I, do, I don't want to. Um have us all, you know, need to knock on wood here, but so far so good, relatively speaking for the majority of the larger names. So hopefully that is a good sign for uh, the remainder of earnings season for, for some of our other names or other, other names out there in the market in this, in this space. Um, in particular, uh, you know, when you look at Netflix, um, strong quarter, um, the international piece is, is certainly the most important component and international subs uh, beat again. Uh, the outlook was, you know, a little mixed, but I think um, as we just look out in general, we continue to see a strong trend of content dollars shifting from traditional broadcast to streaming services, and Netflix is kind of leading the charge on on that front. So we continue to have um, a high degree of confidence that we'll be able to see strong international growth as well as um, uh, continued uh, price increases, which should drive improved revenue and eventually. Uh, should drive um, margins for international hire as well. Uh, moving on to an issue that reports uh, tomorrow in a sector that's been in the doldrums here, uh, Activision. Uh, you know, these the stocks, they have the news and they're in the focus and then you know, they're kind of quiet for a while here. But uh, this stock definitely took a major haircut uh, this year, uh, battling its way back off the lows of the move here. Uh, give us your take on ATVI Activision. Yeah, it's been a challenge for the the whole space over the last, um, you know, at least six months here. And part of that is related to competitive concerns around Fortnite. Part of it's um, also related to uh, just, you know, other issues within within the industry as far as um, investors believing that this was turning into more of a um, kind of subscription or a recurring revenue like model or almost a SaaS or software as a service type of model. And now I think the, the kind of sentiment around that has turned back towards uh, investors feeling that these, these are truly more hits driven businesses, which is kind of where we, where we all started off, you know, several years ago when looking at these names. Um, so that's had an impact on the multiples to some degree. Um, the other thing I would point out though, is that, uh, as we look through the remainder of this year, Activision doesn't have any real significant catalyst from a game perspective, but there could be um, kind of a quote unquote catalyst path as we look into 2020. So in June, there's um, the typical industry conference E3 uh, in mid June, that is, and that should be potentially an environment where we hear more news about streaming as well as um, full game downloads, which should drive more interest um, around these names related to potential for future digital growth. And then as we look into um, later in the year, Activision will be holding its BlizzCon event in November. And there's a high likelihood that they announce a, a new game called Diablo 4 at that event, which could drive um, shares higher as a result of um, uh, anticipation of that coming potentially in 2020 or 2021. Um, and then 2020 is a more favorable setup uh, versus 2019. So we should see um, improving uh, revenue and EPS as a result of just a better product pipeline for the year. Uh, just want to ask you about a couple of other issues that you cover and uh, cover a lot of the big names here. But uh, you sent over a couple yesterday that uh, had some really nice looking charts here. And I just wanted to cover them before we let you go here. Uh, Glue Mobile, GLW. I mean, this thing from $2 in uh, 2017, now uh, trading phew, over $10, closer to 11 uh, any thoughts on this issue? One heck of a run. What are they doing? What are they doing right? And can it continue? Yeah, so Glue is one of the leaders in mobile gaming. Um, you know, other competitors on the public side would be like a, a Zynga, for example. Um, and there are uh, many other mobile game competitors on the private side or that are part of larger, larger companies like Activision owning King, for example. 
Um, so Glue is a, a standalone mobile gaming company that uh, has been successful at essentially just driving um, better monetization and engagement of players within their games. And they've acquired several games um, uh, from studios and developers where they're able to kind of implement their recipe for success um, by essentially uh, sprinkling content into existing games to re uh, maintain that engagement with gamers as well as then um, developing new games for um, their future pipeline. And Blue's been in a sweet spot recently where they have been successful at re remaining or keeping those um, existing gamers engaged, as well as now driving a kind of exciting pipeline for 2019. In particular, they have a Disney Pixar title that's coming out later this year um, that will kind of draft off all of the marketing from some of the major Disney films coming later this year. So that's been the, the recipe for success on that one. All right, and then one more here that I had never even looked at here. Uh, C Limited, uh, Garena, game developer here. Uh, just tell us uh, a little bit about this issue. And also, like, how do you find these issues? Do you, like, just do your homework and just, you know, pour over new issues and issues from across the country? Is this part of, you know, comes from your research department? Because, uh these are some stocks that, well, the glue is a little bit uh, more well known, but to see limited, uh, boy, oh boy, this is a new one to me. Yeah, you know, C is an interesting combination of um, essentially gaming and e-commerce and payments. Um, so it's kind of hitting on three really good secular themes there, as far as as far as potential tailwinds, and they focus on um, Greater Southeast Asia uh, as their core market. And we've, we've seen um, the company kind of morph from being really a gaming focused company to now having a, a very strong e-commerce platform as well. Um, we do expect a continued improvement in uh, the e-commerce business where we see an ongoing um, increase in the company's take rate where they're essentially taking more of each e-commerce transaction that occurs on their platform. Uh, so that should be um, a favorable trend for that business as long as as long as that continues, which is what we're modeling for the next several years. As far as how we how we find these, you know, this uh, glue, as you mentioned, you know, it's a gaming company and we cover the video game space. So so that's one that we've known for a while. Um, this one came up as well because uh, of our gaming coverage, but it uh, really hits well in our sweet spot, just considering we also cover uh, e-commerce and those are kind of the two primary drivers for this business now. All right, Mike Olson is Managing Director and Senior Research Analyst at Piper Jaffrey. Mike, as always, thanks for the time. Thank you. Have a great day. All right. 8.48 now, Joel, any movement in, in this market? No, no. Uh, we're just hanging out here at uh, 29.57.75. That's up nine and a quarter. Uh, someone was asking, you know, do you think we're going to fade here ahead of the Fed meeting? I'd keep an eye on Apple here. Uh, Mid-range on the sessions, 29.57.50. That's where we're trading now. So in order for this rally to keep, we need to hold this 57.50, take out that, you know, pre-market high and just keep on going. If not, you might have a little bit of a, a little bit of a fade uh, into the meeting. Uh, but I, if you get anywhere near yesterday's close at uh, 29.48.50, I'm looking at that as support here in the S&P 500 index futures. That's going to see rotation. There's going to yep. be some rotation here this morning in the pre-market. I'm seeing most stocks bid up. That is not going to continue here because there's, like I said, when I look under the hood, the indexes aren't up enough for as much as some of these tech stocks are up. So the tech stocks in themselves are going to be more than the index gains, like even on the SPY or in, and especially on the QQQ, where you look at Apple being two thirds of the QQQ gain just by itself. That's not including any of the other ones that are up. So there's got to be some stuff that sells off here today. A candidate could potentially be the banks. You know, I didn't really think about this until somebody just asked in the chat, but we do have a Fed meeting. Maybe you want to lock in some gains. I mean, there was, you know, a little red candle in a couple of these uh, bank stocks yesterday. You do see the TLT trading slightly in the green here today, which is never good for banks. So, you know what? Banks are a bit up here in the pre-market. I'm a fader of the little bank rally here in the pre-market. So I haven't gotten any yet, but I think I would be um, if, you know, if I, if I had the chance here. Uh, I kind of like the idea of fading the banks into the Fed here. Yeah, no, right, that's just it. a day trade, though. 
Yep, uh, Bank America was up higher on the session. That did get hit yesterday when we had that little tizzy down to 29.26 here. So we'll see how the banks perform. Uh, Bank America still trading pretty much even with the SPUs here, up 0.26%. SPUs up 0.29%. It's going to sell off. It's going to be consumer staples, I think, are going to sell off to a certain extent because of Clorox. But it's got to be more. There's got to be something else. And maybe it's going to be oil stocks. We do see oil, you know, off a little bit, but I'm not seeing, you know, in the individual stocks. I mean, Conoco Phillips is a big upgrade today, so it's not going to help. Um, Chevron's trading up. Maybe that's on Oxy stuff and continued there. But, you know, so maybe a little bit, you know, oil could help a bit here. But I'm just trying to figure it out. I'm trying to, like, do the math. And I'm like, I see everything bit up pre-market, yet I only see the S&Ps up, you know, nine points here now. Um, maybe Apple fades. You know, maybe that's how it does it. But there Apple doesn't go. look like it wants to fade. It's been holding up the entire, it doesn't look like it wants to. It's not showing any signs that it's fading. So something else has to pick up the slack on the downside. So I think you're going to see a few, some rotation here. And you'd be surprised that maybe the stocks that you actually see get hit. All right, Spencer, let's continue with that earnings parade. Actually, I want to take a quick break for the earnings and get to the drug news of the morning. Drug news, is, all right. Uh, Heron, yes. Heron Therapeutics, HRTX, received a complete response letter. Never a good thing from the FDA for their drug, HTX011, which is meant to manage post-operative pain. That's getting a hit on that headline this morning. And then in line with that, uh, PCRX has a competing drug, and they are popping. Well, it looks like someone was anticipating this HRTX news here as you've sold off hard from the $24 level over the last few sessions. Pre I'll give you a pre-market low. A pre-market low comes in at $13.88, but you got a two bucks bounce off that. So I think as you work your way back towards that area, uh, you should uh, find support in the issue. On the uh, monthlies, oh boy, 13 bucks is the area. Uh, you've had uh, three monthly lows back in 2017 on that one. That's uh, that's my take on HRTX. And then you said PCRX was Correct. the other one? Correct. PCRX is up. It's up strong. Doesn't necessarily mean their drugs going to get approved, but a lot of people seem to be thinking that right now. Trading at the highs of the pre-market session that comes in at forty-six thirty. You had someone with a little bit of a sell opinion here because that's been holding up so uh, over the last hour or so. So I'll use forty-six thirty as a potential uh, resistance point, and then going to the monthlies. Look out for 50 bucks. 50.30 was your high just back in December of last year. All right. And then one uh, upgrade that caught my eye this morning, and that is take two, getting an upgrade from Cowan Big to, one. to uh, outperform. We haven't talked about the game, the video game stocks here for what feels like a couple of weeks. Yeah. But take two. Longer. Longer. They, they, they need to, they needed a vote of confidence. Take two wants to go. It's wanted to go here for a little while. You can tell just been coming back and clawing its way back. And so is Activision Blizzard for that uh, point there. There's still major overhead resistance for these two stocks. 100 for take two and 50 bucks for Activision Blizzard. Both these stocks have kind of been moving very closely together. Um, the, 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 the upgrade from counter this morning, is going to make us challenge potentially the 100. Let's see what it does there. Can it get over the 100? But that's a major resistance point there. So I'll be curious to see, you know, what it does there at a hundred bucks. I think it could test it here today, but I don't know if it's going to get over there or not. Um, Activision Blizzard will be the same thing. Call it $50. That's the big level here in ATVI. It's going to be up here a little bit this morning, but not as much as take two because the upgrades on take two and not ATVI. Yeah, that hundred, very interesting here. Take two, you had the high at one hundred one double oh forty four. You haven't hit that yet in the pre market. Tell us which one. I know you were trading at division. I know you were in and was it? Uh, EA? I'm in an ATVI. Yeah, I have. Did that. you did you have some EA though that you dumped and I you sold promised? It. You knew you were gonna yeah, buy it I said back, I would though? rebuy it. I haven't rebought it. <laughs> should I rebuy it? I sold it. One I don't know. Time. I just don't want you to hear say, "Oh, I should have rebought it." I know, you know, I should, it. I should rebuy it. I probably should, but it's time to sell. Well, I think that was like in pre-market. Like it what got was... silly. Yeah, I went from eighty dollars to one hundred and five on that game. One game, it was just silly, and you know, I hung out there for five, six days, and I actually came and rechallenged, and now it started to leak. 
I said I wanted to rebuy it around 90. It's never got back to 90. Okay. <laughs> but I, well, you know what? Maybe you got to strike at 94, 95. I mean, I don't have a problem with you coming into some of these things. I still believe in esports, and I still believe in the games, and I don't think they're going away. And I think eventually we see all-time highs on all these stocks again. I don't know if that's happening this year, but I think if you're sticking these stocks away in your long-term portfolio, take two, EA and ATV, I think you'll be happy that you did it. The only one I do own still right now is ATVI. That's in my long-term portfolio. I'm slightly down and I'm averaging around 50 bucks. So I'm slightly in the red here, but we're sticking with that one. What was That's the what one? Also, Pactor said he thinks it's a double. What What was, uh, I can't even remember. Fortnite was the, the game. And then what did, uh, what did the other one come out and challenge it? Take two. I can't even forget about EA's it. EA's game. What was it? EA's game. Legends of something? Legends of Doom? <laughs> what? No. We're completely making that up. Legends. It was something. No, Legends. Yeah, I don't, Apex Legends. 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 Apex Legends. Apex Legends, guys. Come on. Apex Legends. <laughs> League of Legends. Me and Joel. Come on. I gave you a chance. The little men who don't play video games. <laughs> Apex- I think it was Super Mario 3. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what it was. It was Super Mario 10. All right. Um, we need more Marios. Okay. I would play Super Mario 10. When's Super Mario 10 coming out? I don't know. <laughs> uh, let's do, 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 do. do. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's real quick look <laughs> at Square. They're due to report after the close today. It wants to go. I think it wants to go. It's sleepy. If they say some good stuff, this could Ooh. last off to like 80. Now, at- if they don't, you know, obviously this is still a coin flip here. I mean, if they disappoint, they disappoint. This is in consolidation station here right now, though. I like the story still going forward. Part of me wants to buy it ahead of the report. I think there's some other people that want to buy it ahead of the report too because it's already trading up 1% here today. But I don't know if I got the guts to do it. So anyways, uh, you know, valuation here is still very high. So they obviously have to, you know, say some good stuff. But I think it wants to go. A tight range here, really, since April 18th, a trading range between 70 and 74, with the majority of that price action taking place between 71.50 and 73.50. So hopefully, you know, it seems like it's really, of course, going into earnings due for a move, a blast above 74 here. Things look wide open if they crack that $70 level room on the downside. But uh, this one, maybe if the, you know, the, well, it's already off, uh, sev- it's off the $73 level. Maybe if it comes back to 73, maybe look a little bit, see what the straddle is, because this thing is winding up and winding up big. Uh, also, due to report after the close today, look at my list. Uh, not too many big names. Qualcomm. Qualcomm. Yep, Qualcomm was just words in my mouth. It, normally, it's not a big one, but because it's been so wild, I mean, this is going to be an interesting report. Um, we do know that they do have the extra two bucks eventually coming from the Apple deal. And obviously, I have seller's remorse on this thing because when I sold it, I didn't have all that information, which was silly on my part. Never saw something you don't have all the information on. Uh, but I mean, it's been an incredible run. It obviously has a lot of people sitting on a lot of profits here. So I wouldn't be surprised if you actually see it's It's up this morning on Apple. So it's not surprising that it's up on Apple. Just watch for a fade here into the report because if I, I'm just saying, you know, psychological behind it. If I was sitting on this huge gain in Qualcomm, would I want to take it through this report? Maybe not. So you might see a little bit of selling ahead of the report. So I don't know if, you know, it's, what it's going to do after the report. But I think it could be a few nervous Nellies here that maybe want to book in some gains ahead of the report. So let's just watch it here and see if it does show a little bit of weakness ahead of the report. But after the report, who knows? Coin flip. All right. Uh, I guess that'll do it for today's show. Joel, before we go, though, you wanted to mention a couple of new names that we, are, that we have gotten to come to the Benzinga Trading Summit on June 20th. Who else is coming? Yeah, I just wanted to mention uh, uh, we have Jeremy Newsom coming, who's going to show us uh, in live and in person how to trade those gaps. Uh, another favorite from the chat, uh, Kenny Kenny Glick from HitTheBid.com. Little different uh, style of uh, trading, so he'll be with us uh, in the live trading room. And uh, also, I'm glad to announce that. Definitely one of the crowd favorites, Anne-Marie Band, uh, will be joining us in New York City. So 
We will get to make her laugh in person. She will uh, be joining us in the live training room and, and doing a presentation as well. So we are racking up some good people to be at that event. Very much looking forward to it. Spencer, give them the, the promotion. Code. Yeah, BenzingerTradingSummit.com is the website. Promo code PMP, as in pre-market prep, PMP15 for 15% off any ticket. Someone mentioned in the chat that the, the site doesn't say the venue. The venue will be announced, I'm told, in the next couple of days, but count on Midtown Manhattan for uh, somewhere in that area for the event. Again, June 20th, BenzingerTradingSummit.com. To learn more, PMP15 is your promo code. Thank you to today's guest, Mike Olson. Thanks to all of you in our chat, both on YouTube and premarket.benzinger.com. Please remember all the information from our show is for informational purposes only, not meant to be investing advice. And hope you all have a good day on that note. Big, big pop for Mattel right now. Just at 9 o'clock, they did announce a, a new or, or expanded global licensing pack with Disney for uh, Pixar. So okay. you're seeing Mattel. Obviously, they already have some deals going with because they make the toys. We're but it looks those. like they expanded it here this morning. So you're seeing Mattel lift up with the Disney hype. All right. Uh, everyone have a good rest of your day. We will see you on Thursday.